button. Then I'm going to welcome you guys to 3D design and I'm going to walk us through this process. So the development process that you guys have been going through for the last uh, week or so. We started off with the concept right up here, a concept of an idea, something like that. Then the next phase was a drawing. You know, try to come up with some kind of a drawing so that you can visualize, visualize what the concept is and possibly, you know, how it looks, what shape is it gonna be? What color is it gonna be? You know, because for 3D designers, shape and color, line, texture, um, Let's see, what are, the, what are the five elements of art that we've been talking about all year long in our design classes? Line, shape, value, texture, and color. Those are the, really the only five things that we deal with in design. Line, shape, value, texture, color. And all of those things go into every artwork, whether it's a painting, a drawing, a computer, uh, something, um, you know, a website, a computer design, something like that. Or we are now working in three dimensions. We're working with 3D design. So it has to be something that has a shape and a color and texture and line and all of those things that are part of the five elements of art go into our, our concept. So we are doing that with drawings. We're trying to do that with drawings to see how the drawing works. The next thing after a drawing is to draw, try to do some kind of a model or a mock-up. We're trying to mock up this thing as we you know, develop a pattern in, in our case, because we're sewing this thing. But we, in some way you're, have, you're gonna try to mock up your <clears throat> design. And so yes, yesterday, Monday, the other day, I was asking you guys, I'm gonna take my clothes pins off of this, to actually think about the possibility of just building your mask in like brown paper. Um, brown paper um, from a shopping bag or something like that. This is from a, um, a Safeway shopping bag. And no, this is not a Nike swoosh on the side. That's just part of the Safeway logo. But this was a way to try to take the idea from drawing to some kind of a pattern that would work in terms of it's a mock-up, you know, it's, a, it's not even quite a prototype. It's just a model to try to see how it works three-dimensionally, how does it fit on the face? What are the shape contours? And what things would need to happen to make this better? How would we change or morph or tweak the contours and the shape of this thing so that it might fit on us better? When we get done with the mock-up, then we go to prototype. And I have been kind of jumping you guys ahead, jump, jump, jump into this prototyping process. So the prototype in this process is right here. That's actually making the thing out of real material in our case, actually trying to create a sewn fabric thing. And again, we're trying to uh, tweak it and you know so that it fits and so that we're tweaking the shape, we're tweaking the fit, we're tweaking everything about this as we create the prototype. Um, as we are trying to figure out how to refine this design even more. And then finally, you know, the prototyping process for the Invent Oregon thing is going to happen later in April, like around April 25th, April 26th, when we go to the semifinals, our team will, will advance and our team will automatically advance to the semifinals because we only have two teams from Southwestern. So we've got two teams. Uh, they will both automatically advance to the semifinals, which will be a Zoom meeting um, that's going to be hosted by Portland State University. And so the colleges that are in our region or whatever are going to get together. And once again, you know, they're going to um, uh, present their prototypes. They're going to present their ideas. They're going to get kind of judged on the ideas. And then from there, if we advance to the state finals, um, that would be in June. Um, uh, once we do the semifinals with Portland State, um, if you advance, then you're going to receive some money uh, to, to create your prototype. And you see, we are way ahead of the game in terms of prototyping our design because it's already something that um, we've been refining and prototyping. So um, 
this is not like trying to prototype um, an app for a cell phone or, a, you know, for instance, a new cell phone or something like that. A lot of these um, different um, teams will be doing apps. Um, they're going to be computer programmers and computer designers, and they're going to create apps for cell phones and, and junk like that. Um, very few will be doing actual inventions of mechanical devices, and very few will be doing things like us, which is a lot more of a combination of a concept, um, a device, and fashion. We are putting fashion and the device together so that it's going to be a worn thing that is a uh, really an improvement uh, in mask design. So that's the concept. And the final, final thing then, when you get through the prototyping phase is to work with a manufacturer. You're actually gonna work with a business and a manufacturer to try to manufacture your product. And if, the, if you get through all of this, then you're gonna actually market the product and you don't have to do that. The manufacturer is probably gonna do 90% of the marketing of the product as you um, are teaming up with and cooperating with the manufacturer. Now, er at every point in this, pro Madison has a question. What's up, Maddie? Um, I wanted to ask, so when we, so, okay, say that we get to the manufacturing part, right? Um, would, would the manufacturers give the students who created this product uh, credit for this, or would it just be them taking like, all the credit and revenue from the market and stuff. Like, how does that work? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, very carefully. Anytime that people put um, documents in front of you to sign, um, you're going to probably want to have a lawyer so that you can have somebody, you know, look over the documents and make sure you're not signing away the farm. But also, you know, we have to understand what our role is in this whole thing. Um, we're students, um, we're not professional designers. We're trying mm -hmm. to figure this stuff out and this is like getting our feet wet in the world of design. Um, we might not make a ton of money on this. Your name, your name will be on the project if not on the final product because when you go from prototype to manufacture, the manufacturer is going to, um, do a little bit of tweaking of your design and your product too, because it's, it has to fit into their manufacturing processes. They have to figure out the most economical way to produce and distribute this thing. And so some of our um, very labor intensive uh, layout and design of the mask in the prototyping process changes in the manufacturing process because they will use um, mass production techniques to stamp out the pattern pieces and figure out how they're going to sew them up. And if they can figure out a way to sew them up without using labor, they're going to do that. So there's yeah. the manufacturing piece is different than the design piece. And you're not going, you're not going to make a million dollars off of this million dollar idea. Um, we as designers have to understand that we're only part of a process um, but you're going to make something. You're either going to get a licensing fee for this. You're going to be able to copyright the idea if it is copyrightable. Um, you know, um, if you decide that you don't want to work with a manufacturer and you want to start your own manufacturing company, that's something that's completely different because then you're getting into business development, which is getting a little bit outside of 3D design and design what this class is all about. But you're, you're mm -hmm. certainly welcome to take your concept and continue to develop it on your own. Um, that's, that's a possibility. Um, okay. I've been talking to Maddie about her ideas and innovations, which are slightly different than the ones that I've been pushing and maybe slightly different than everybody else's. And there might, become a, there might come an inflection point in the next couple of days where you guys are gonna decide whether you're gonna work on the same team with the same design concept or whether you might wanna break into a separate team and develop your own design concept. And maybe we'll have two teams designing two parallel mask concepts that are both gonna go uh, through this process. Or you might decide you're gonna keep your idea you know, on the back burner while you continue to work on it and maybe just participate in the team process to have that experience, have that line on your resume 
and go through the process, but you can hold your idea back, you know, and, and keep it as your own idea if you want to. As designers, we always have to play this kind of game with how much are we going to, um, you know, how much, um, um, how much are we going to fight for our own design and try to push it forward and, you know, try to win the design uh, concept on our team? How much can we cooperate with the team and compromise and work with the others to try to just get to the best possible you know design that we're working with right now this this quarter or this year or something like that and of course you'll be able to come back you keep coming back to re, uh, refinements in the design over time that's what those green arrows on the board are all about you get somewhat through the design process and then you kick it back up into um, revisions and you have to continually kind of edit and revise your design as you go um, to make it better. Um, that's a big part of the manufacturing process is every year, you know, uh, manufacturers are working with their designers to revise things, to try to meet the market demand, or also try to lead the market into something new that's innovative and the best, you know, product and that kind of stuff. Usually manufacturers only care about making sales. So sometimes they, oftentimes, they do innovations and stuff that are more about marketing and less about performance of the product. We as designers, you know, we're the pure ones. We're the ones that are trying to, um, you know, get the best performance product, you know, uh, uh, you know, out there in front of the public as possible. We're the ones who are trying to save the world. That's our problem as designers. We're trying to save the world. And sometimes that's a problem. Um, I know I'm all over the place, but let me just move now from talking about this, this uh, development um, process and development loop into you know, what we were able to achieve so far. Um, I'm working with you guys, like we're brinking this. I'm working right up on, into the last minute and beyond to try to get stuff going. Ethan is gonna come in this morning after class to meet with me to kind of talk about what's gonna to happen tomorrow night and what he has to do, you know, in terms of trying to pitch this idea for Invent Oregon. And we'll try to see, if, you know, how many team members wanna be on camera talking about this stuff, how many team members are gonna be playing their own individual roles, whether those are supporting roles or not in terms of development and design. And so I'll walk us through that. Let me take a moment to just talk about Mr. Fritz. Yes. Um, is it okay if I actually join that conversation on Zoom? Yeah. Because I also am very curious about how everything is going to go down. I'm really nervous because I don't know what's going to go down. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Invent Oregon process, you the whole class can actually join the Zoom meeting. That's why I sent that link out yesterday to everybody in the whole class. Um, okay. but we've got the three or four principal people who want to be team members and you're welcome to join the team at any time and also other team members if you're getting nervous about this and might want to drop out the team can be very fluid and flexible I, I do need somebody like Ethan to maybe be a lead contact person so that Invent Oregon knows who to send invitations to and that they're actually dealing with a person but other team members you know we can be flexible on that. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to talk about Mai's mask for a minute. Now, this is not coming out as the brown color that she um, uh, that she chose. I'm sorry, I don't quite have my lighting situation, but it's pretty close. And so I wanted to look at this as a mask and just look at it on. It is on a. Um, wig stand right now um, so that we can kind of view this thing three-dimensionally and see how it fits and see how it fits on the wearer. And so um, Mai's mask uh, comes up fairly high on the nose and that's really nice. It covers the chin. Having these two contact points and these two fit points are pretty important for all of the people who are uh, trying to deal with masks because this makes a, a better seal around the face. So trying to have it come up on the nose is good. I've got a little poochy thing happening right here on the nose. I'd like to kind of maybe rip open this seam and re-sew this a little bit better so that this isn't quite so funky. There's also another thing I'd like to do. Right now, 
this contour right here in front of the face is just a little bit flat. And I would like to, I'm, I keep redesigning this pattern, you know, from every time I make a mask, I want this to just be a little bit more of an arc shape, a little bit more of a curving shape in front of the face. Not too much. I don't want it to go way out, but we're just trying to find a really nice tweak here to get enough space to get a, a really nice contour uh, for the front of the mask. I'm sorry. Yeah, from the actually from the side of the mask when the mask is viewed from the side and how it fits on a person's face. From the front, this is a really nice fit. I've got something that's kind of winding up here being a, he a hexagon. Yeah, a six-sided hexagon. And so from the bridge of the nose, we're kind of coming down to a point on both cheekbones. And then we're kind of coming in a little bit at a really nice rakish angle here from the cheekbone to the jawbone. And then from the jawbone, we're coming down to a point underneath the chin. And so this thing actually is winding up to be a hexagon shape, which I think is going to be a good fitting shape that, because um, we want this thing to be um, flattering to the wearer and to be fashionable and everything from every angle. We want, we want it to look good from the front. We want the front presentation to look good. We'd like it to look good from a three quarter angle so that it really looks fashionable and fits the wearer from three quarters. We'd like it to look good from the side. So again, that it inspires confidence. It's a really good looking shape. It looks really um, uh, fitted and tailored and put together, uh, put together look. Now with Mai's mask, I went ahead and threw um, a very thin black uh, cordage through there. So through the tunnel where we would throw the, 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 um, the tie, I was able to push through this cordage and bring it around the ear. And for now, I've got one of those little uh, tensioning devices, those spring tensioning devices, so that I could just um, have a little bit extra um, extra length and be able to just tension it on there so that we could see exactly, you know, what it looked like, you know, coming, coming around the ear and coming into the two attachment points. So that, cause that's part of the shape and that's part of the design of the mask too. How does the tie look and how does the tie function around the ears? Cause we'd like to promote a really good fit. And that means a pretty tight, um, fastening mechanism, a pretty tight fastening tie mechanism to tie this off in the back. Okay, so Mai, thank you very much for coming in yesterday and working with me to cut up the patterns with a new pattern and sew them together. I just, I know you guys are kind of, it's like drinking from the fire hose with me and I'm really sorry about that, but you know, time is of the essence and I kind of want to, um, play this game with you guys a little bit. So I'm going to change, um, I'm going to change camera angles to the, the bird's eye camera angle on my desktop once again, just to um, see if I can make this work. Um, I'm going to pull the camera towards me and so that I get the least amount of um, um, whatever. So I'm going to try to find those uh, the six points of contact on the face now with um, this kind of uh, idea for the mask. If I'm making a hexagon and I'm trying to get it to contact my face in six points that are going to be really nice, I've got my cheekbones that I'm kind of working with here. I'm got, I've got these spots on the jaw. I'm going to have this spot down here under the chin and this spot right up here, you know, on the bridge of the nose. And if I connect the dots then, and I can kind of come up with something that is going to be um, uh, a, a hexagon that has, you know, these sides are kind of at an angle and raked a little bit so that they are, um, so that they have a, just a slight angle that is complementary to the face. And, you know, it's going to kind of hook up like this, only it's kind of going to go under the chin a little bit. So what I'm sort of evolving my mask design into, and if you guys want to come along with me, that would be great, is, is a fabric mask that is kind of like this. It has a seam 
sewn right down the middle. Um, it's the, um, the Olsen style mask because this really gives you a very simple yet tailored put together look. And uh, so that would, be, that would be that mask kind of shape then. I've, I chose a new crayon. I've got a new color crayon so that I've got a different color for us to talk about today. And we're trying to rake this mask in two different kind of angles, you know, from the center seam back to the back. And then we go from the back, we're gonna come around the ear with our two um, ties, a top and a bottom tie. And right now I'm looking at this as an ear loop instead of um, um, something that ties around the back of the head, just because the ear loop is something that really um, is a fast way to don and doff the mask, to put it on and take it off. In fact, I gotta bring that back a little bit, bring this forward a little bit and here. So once again, from the side, our hexagonal mask, if we're gonna kind of stick with that, would come back to about that point on the cheekbone, drop down to about this point on the jawbone, kind of come to this point underneath the chin. It rides on the nose at about that point. And then we're looking at something that comes straight down the bridge of the nose. And then we wanna have a curve, a really not too big, not too small, just right curve so that you can actually speak out of the front of this thing and not have your speaking impaired by, um, fabric pulling tightly across your lips. So, you know, we keep, keep kind of refining, refining, refining this design to try to see, you know, if we can come up with something that actually works as a mask design. Now you guys, you know, this is my design process and you guys are sure welcome to come up with whatever variations on this that you want. Um, you can come up with something completely different if you want, if you really feel like you're being um, constrained by my ideas, but I wanted to at least get something out there so that we had something that we could play with and work with as a prototype design. Um, anybody can continue to work uh, other ideas and kind of bring them in from the side as you refine your ideas and as they work out for you. But, you know, we've got a mask that has to fit. It has to be fashionable. Um, it has to function well in terms of breathability. And then also, you know, it, it would be really nice if you, could, if you could breathe through this well enough to be able to do um, public speaking, um, uh, athletic uh, kinds of activities so that you don't feel like you're restricted in your breathing at all. And then finally be able to speak through it without your speech being impaired. So I'm gonna come back to myself now, my selfie, cause it's all about me. And I want you guys to know that I've been working on this and I can't find my mask design. Where did I put the one that I just sewed? There it is, it's under all this stuff. So I have continued to refine, refine, refine this shape and tweak it and tweak it just little bits. And so even in this particular drawing, I've tweaked things, I've tweaked angles right here and I have tweaked this because it got too flat. And so I tried to push this out, this curve out just a little bit more. I, I had the wrong angle on here on Saturday for the nose, for the bridge of the nose. So I've you know, made this angle, I've corrected this angle so that it fits better. And when all of that works together, here's the one that I sewed last night and put together, you know, again, as a demonstration piece. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I'm gonna try to bring it up close to the camera. This is out of pinstripe wool material that you would actually make a suit out of, a suit of clothes, um, a suit jacket, suit pants, possibly a three-piece suit if you went ahead and had a um, vest to go with it. This would be the exact same material uh, of a business suit only brought up onto the face. And so again, I've got these, these uh, hexagonal points here, you know, point here, two points here, and one point down here. And of course, since I have a beard, I have other you know, design issues and stuff, but I'm trying to get that these, this shape and this fit that I'm trying to go after. 
And I'm afraid that this from the side, from the side view, it's still too flat, you know, across my face, but I am able to speak, uh, speak easily. It's not pulling across my lips. So it does function quite well. The other thing that I noticed when I was working with the wool, the pinstripe wool, is that this, this wool pinstripe is actually a very open weave material. And so I don't even have to punch a whole bunch of holes in the front of this thing to be able to breathe through it. This is such an open weave material that I can breathe straight through the thing. And the whole cover of this mask then becomes something that I can breathe through. So that once again, I've got the cover of the mask on one side in pinstripe. I've got the interior of the mask is, is black in color. And then my um, pocket for the uh, filter of the mask is in the center. And it's, it's, a, it's a shape that kind of just follows this kind of triangle of nose and mouth. And so it's a long slit, but it also comes out kind of like a triangle or a diamond shape in front of my mouth. And that allows me to breathe directly through the back center of the mask and actually just use the filter material, which we are specifying as something close to an N95, but we wanna really have filter material that is high permeability um, you know, for gases to be able to, to breathe through, um, low restriction so that we can actually breathe through this thing. And my theory is that it doesn't have to be N95. If the entire mask works as a good, comfortable, fashionable system that people want to wear instead of feel, feeling like it's icky and you know, not fun to wear and not fashionable, then people will wear it. And with the, when, when there is program compliance, when you have people actually wearing the mask, that really, really cuts down on the transmission of the virus. And so, you know, everybody thinks that the vaccines are going to save the world. My friends, your mask is actually going to save the world because we can do so much with the vaccines. But if we want to return to things like um, going to classes in person, um, going to weddings uh, this summer, going to uh, sporting events and festivals and fairs, um, concerts, all of that kind of stuff, you're going to actually need a fashionable mask that people are going to want to wear. And this is really the thing that's going to return us to normal life. This is, this is the kind of concept that's going to actually take us and put us right back in, into, um, you know, return to normal, which is what everybody really wants. Yes, you'll be wearing masks, but if the masks are well-designed and um, fashionable and fun to wear, and if they, have to, if they have to, we'll have a Nike swoosh on one side of it down by the jawline so that everybody thinks that, oh, it's a Nike product, it must be good. Whatever it takes to get people to wear this damn thing, you know, if we can make it fashionable and market it to people, they will wear it and it will cut down on the transmission of disease. Um, I also, I didn't have any flu this winter because I was wearing masks so much and social distancing from other people. This spring, my um, uh, seasonal allergies are down. I'm not as congested because I'm wearing a mask and um, the mask is cutting down on the pollens and molds that are suspended in the air that I'm breathing. So these masks are like amazing things for a lot of respiratory ailments and illnesses. And uh, we're on the right track with designing this stuff. This is where I have to take a break. I have been talking enthusiastically forever. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna entertain any questions or comments on this. Um, and I just wanna tell you that I'm gonna be available today sitting around here in the design lab with my sewing machines and my fabrics. If you guys need to stop over one at a time or two at a time at the most, we could you know, use my new, um, my new and improved and latest version of this mask design um, to recut out mask uh, pattern pieces for you guys and sew these things together. Um, Ethan is a um, uh, kind of a um, 
priority right now because he's going to be trying to make this presentation tomorrow night uh, along with the rest of the team members uh, for the um, for the event Oregon thing. So I really want to make sure that I'm getting masks into the hands of people who are going to be participating in the event Oregon thing. Um, so I'm meeting this morning, you know, after class with Ethan to answer his questions and talk about strategy and sew him a mask if he wants to sew a mask together. But otherwise, in the next couple of days, today, Thursday and Friday, I'm going to make myself available here to try to help you guys take your mask idea from um, model, mock-up, prototype, concept, or this is the mock-up to a prototype to a sewn mask, you know, in, in fabric, so that this thing actually fits on your face and is wearable. This is the prototype that we're trying to get to. For the Invent Oregon process, we don't even get to the prototyping stage until late April or sometime between April and June. And here we are the second week of class already prototyping our masks. So we're, we're actually way ahead of the game on this, which is really cool. Okay. Um, that was the most disorganized hot mess of um, presentation that I possibly could have done. So I wanted to just see if you guys um, have any questions for me about where you're at in this mask process. Uh, I know I put a deadline for this as tonight, Wednesday night at midnight, which I am going to um, push out there a ways and maybe, you know, have this mask, this sewn mask design, or I, actually I haven't done the sewn mask. The tonight's thing is to make a prototype out of paper, um, a mock-up out of paper. So this is the thing that I'm really looking for in terms of trying to get something made up for by tonight. And I'm going to push that out until Saturday so that you've got more time to work on this. And hopefully next week we will be able to get everybody a sewn mask out of the fabric of your choice so that you've got something um, done and prototyped by the end of next week. So that should hopefully get us through this process. And then I've got to come up with another project because we can't just be working on masks for the whole quarter. So um, this is kind of the we're going to probably be playing with this for another week or so before we move on to something else. Okay, this is me not talking now. So any questions, comments from you guys out there in television land? Um, can you put the your new and improved mask um, paper thingy on the coursework uh, stuff so I can download it and print it out? here at yes. home perfect that's a brilliant idea yes i just drew this five minutes before class started and so i have to um scan it uh, as a document and then i can blast it out to you guys in coursework so that in fact i will replace the one that's currently in coursework with this one which is new and improved this is the the where am i with the light source over here this is the large one and so you'd have to be bringing in your contours you know, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch all the way around to make it a medium or a small size. A small size might have to come in three eighths of an inch or so all the way around. So we just incrementally shrink this thing to go from large to medium to small. Um, but yes, I'll put this up. Good question. Excellent question. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for the big teacher who is so disorganized and yet so excited about this process. Sosie's here. I got to make sure that I got her on the list because I missed you early. So there we go. You are attending. My Madison Kelsey, Emily, Daniela, Adriel are all here. So you guys are wonderful. Um, so um, I've been working, I guess, the most with Ethan so far. And by working, I mean, I've exchanged a couple of emails and um, like a phone call or something. So, or, or talked, you know, um, kind of about coming in and working just a little bit more and getting kind of ready to do um, a presentation tomorrow night. They're not really looking for 
some kind of a real full-blown presentation or pitch, um, we're, we understand that the presentation is a concept that is in progress. And so the pitch is just like, what's the concept? What's the idea? Can you make the pitch, you know, to very briefly talk about what the idea is? Do you have something, anything that you can hold up in front of a webcam to um, talk about and illustrate your idea? And most, most of the schools at this point would be holding up some kind of a drawing and talking about this um, as their basic concept or idea. And so if you are able to take um, any or all of my, um, of the um, uh, wig stands here with the masks pinned to them, you're sure welcome to be able to use this as a visual aid to be able to talk about the mask concept and then talk about any of the features of the mask, the four features that I came up with, fit, fashion, um, breathability and speakability basically are the four concepts that we're trying to address with this mask design. And the, also the idea that this is a hybrid, this is a combination of a very ugly mask. I'm sorry, but this has, this has a look and a connotation to it of industry. This is an industrial dust mask is basically what the N95 mask is. So we're trying to take the best possible um, performance aspects of a filter mask, what they're calling a, a respirator. This is defined as a respirator. And we're trying to combine that with a fashion a fashion barrier mask, basically. These were designed as barriers so that we could um, just uh, have this up as a barrier to um, particles floating in the air. But the idea of being able to breathe through this well enough so that it gives you some filtration, it might not be N95, but it might be N50 or N60 or N65. We're combining the best, um, the best performance of both of these concepts. This is fashion and this is a filter um, respirator. So if we can combine the respiration and that's that, that piece of it is the, um, the filter that goes into the pocket. The, the filter piece goes into the pocket. We're gonna be pitching down the road the idea that filters um, are something that can be um, mass produced in a flat kind of a situation and cut out flat and then stacked up and sold in packages of 10 or 20 or something like that so that the filters can be changed in these things. Throw the mask in the washing machine and wash the mask, throw the filter piece away and then change the filters. Um, this is a stack of something that was marketed on amazon.com as N95 filters. And, you know, they're just a crappy multi, multi thickness um, uh, filter paper. And of course the shape is awful because the shape is not the shape for our mask. So we're trying to do the same thing that Apollo 13 did, you know, when they, were, when they had their um, carbon dioxide scrubbers in the, um, um, in the lunar module and the command module. And the lunar module had uh, the scrubber that was round and the command module had the scrubber that was um, square. And so with duct tape, they had to, um, you know, modify the, the, the um, atmosphere scrubber, the um, CO2 scrubber in the, in the lunar module to work in the command module because the, that one blew out in that uh, Apollo 13 uh, lunar mission. So, you know, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to fit, you know, this concept into this shape. And that's what, that's kind of what we're doing with the, with um, this project. Um, I've bored you guys so much. So, but, you know, it's kind of fun to think of yourselves as rocket, rocket scientists and rocket designers, because that's kind of a cool concept. So this is what we're doing. We are building masks this week. We're, um, we're conceiving of them. We're, we're um, doing mock-ups of the mask. And then eventually we're gonna get to prototypes of the mask. And hopefully our team members, our 
you know, two, three or four team members who want to speak for this uh, process will be able to um, do so tomorrow night and just answer questions and be yourself and you'll be just fine at our local um, Invent Oregon showcase, which is tomorrow night at 630. So I sent you guys the link to that. It's in your uh, email. And if anybody wants to join in and just sit back and be a spectator and watch the um, the, the uh, Invent Oregon showcase process, you're sure welcome to. The only people that have to you know speak or answer questions or talk are the team members and they can do it just like I am, you know, unscripted and just doing your best to be able to talk about the concept and answer any questions that the physics teacher has for you. And that's all we're gonna do and it'll be fun. So having said all that, I burned 45 minutes today again with this process. I'd like you guys to continue working on designing your masks and your mask project. And when you think you've got something that you'd like to come over here and actually cut out and sew and make, you can do that. I'm gonna send this out um, because Maddie asked me to. I'm gonna send this out. Um, I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna replace this in our coursework as the pattern so that Maddie can trace this out and sew this at home on her sewing machine and you know her own pattern at home. Otherwise, I've got two sewing machines and a bunch of uh, fabric here at um, here. And so I'm, I'm gonna invite you guys to kind of come in in small groups uh, you know, over the next three days and see if we can sew some of these up for you. So, but right now I just have to collapse into a chair because this was a lot of presentation for one day. Um, so I'll see you guys on Friday um, as we can continue this process. Friday's class comes after Thursday night's um, showcase presentation. So we'll see what Thursday night holds for us. And then we'll do an after action review on Friday and see how we did and see where we're going with this mask design process. So until then, I wanna say goodbye to all of you guys and say, I'll see you again on Friday morning at nine o'clock. So long for now. Bye-bye.